You are watching a man designing and analyzing an air launch satellite vehicle with the aid of a computer. Using computers to design aerospace vehicles isn't new. What may be new to you is the way the man is using the computer and communicating with it. Here he is directly specifying his design and flight plan with the light pen and online keyboard then watching graphs of the resulting vehicle performance on a TV-like display screen as the vehicle's trajectory is being computed. Traditionally, computer assistance has been a much longer and more tedious process for the aerospace engineer, involving the manual transcription of design curves and parameters onto key punch forms, the two-hour to two-day delays for key punching and for each computer run, and the manual transcription of numerical computer printouts into performance curves. Most maddening of all are the inevitable trivial errors which are recognized and corrected within seconds of seeing the output, but still consign the engineer to another two-hour to two-day wait for his corrected results. With the system you have been watching, called Graphic Rocket, the engineer can accomplish all his debugging and performance analysis in an interactive dialogue with the computer. At any time during the computation, if he doesn't like the results, he can go back, re-specify part of the design and flight plan, and immediately try again. And when he's through for the day, he can file his work away on a disk storage device. To show how Graphic Rocket works, we'll take a real-life example. The original problem was to design a satellite system which would allow us to take pictures of a hurricane and return the photos within six hours. After some preliminary analysis, we've decided that the most promising approach is an air-launched booster, using the flight plan shown here. So, we'll use Graphic Rocket to build a model of the vehicle. Then we'll simulate a number of flights using different launch conditions pull-up maneuvers and vehicle design parameters and compare the displays of the resulting performance. We'll start with the file page on the screen. It lets us store complete runs on a disk storage device and recall them at any time by pointing to the appropriate box with the light pen. To save some time, I'll read in the model from a previous run and only show a couple of changes before executing the run on this film. Now note the boxes on the bottom of the page. They tell me which pages I can visit next. With the light pen, I'll indicate the Earth Model page. The Earth model page allows us to specify whether or not we want an oblate or spherical Earth, a rotating or non-rotating Earth model, or the type of atmosphere model we wish. We've indicated we want tabular atmosphere number two. To find out where this is, we go to a table page, which shows atmosphere number two, and up above has the description of this atmosphere. Now we'll return to the Earth model page and then go right on to the initial conditions page. This page first lets us specify how we will put in our initial conditions and then provides us with the appropriate fields for the initial condition values. The last run had an initial flight path angle of zero degrees. We want to see how our performance is affected if we change this to 10 degrees. In case you don't know what a flight path angle is, Graphic Rocket has a help page which gives more detailed definitions of some of the trajectory jargon. Most of the Graphic Rocket contro control pages have similar help pages. Here we see that the flight path angle is the angle between the local horizontal and the velocity vector, or the direction the vehicle is going. Now we'd like to increase the pull-up angle 
to go along with the higher initial flight path thing. How do we do this? This is a type of vehicle guidance. So we'll go to the control page to see how to get to guidance. The control page can be reached from every gra basic graphic rocket page. It shows how all the pages are connected. You can see the file, earth model, and initial condition pages we have visited before. Nominally, a user progresses along the circle specifying section conditions, aerodynamics, propulsion, guidance, and the like, then goes to d list his display, control it, and then view the graphs of the resulting trajectory. However, he can skip around from one page to the next. We see that guidance is reached via the section condition, so let's go there. Before we try to explain section conditions, let's go back to the picture. The model of our vehicle has to be built in sections to account for the differences in flight plan and vehicle configuration along the trajectory. In section one, we'll fire the booster engine and have the vehicle do a pull-up maneuver by keeping the vehicle's axis at a high angle of attack above the flight path. Once we've pulled up to a satisfactory attitude angle, we'll stop section one and start section two, which guides the booster at a constant attitude angle. When the booster stage burns out, we switch to section three, where we drop off what's left of the booster and continue with a smaller sustainer engine for our propulsion. We'll talk about the coast phase later. Through the section conditions page, Graphic Rocket allows us to define 10 different trajectory sections. In each section, we can choose different ways of specifying terminations, printouts, propulsion, aerodynamics, and the like. Each one has three standard options, none, same as the previous section, and display for modification. Let's see in our example how this works. We want to modify the pull-up maneuver which is in the first section of the trajectory. So we go to the guidance line, indicating section one, and display for modification. This pitch guidance page gives all the options available for guiding our vehicle along the direction of flight. Here we see we have chosen the angle of attack. We want to keep it constant at a value of 20 degrees. We can do quite a few other things for example, if we wanted to use a table of inertial attitude angles versus time, we would indicate the boxes for control angle from table versus time, inertial attitude angle, and then use the table page to specify the table number. If we're not sure how all these angles are defined, once again we can go to a help page and see a diagram to see how the flight path angle, angle of attack, attitude angle, and inertial attitude angle are related. A return box brings us back to the guidance page, where another return box takes us to section conditions. For this run, we'd also like to have the vehicle fly at a higher attitude angle in the second and third section. First we indicate section two, then guidance display again. Again, the pitch guidance page appears, this time indicating we are in section two. Once again, we're holding a constant control angle, but this time it's the vehicle attitude angle. The old value is 25, but we change this to 40 on this run, and then return to the section condition page. During section three, the sustainer engine stage, we want the vehicle to hold the same attitude angle as in section two. We can do this quite easily by changing to section three and hitting the guidance same box. Everybody has to verify at least once that this works, so we page to guidance display, and indeed, we now have 40 degrees for the value of the control angle during this section. Now we're ready to run the trajectory, but first we'll have to specify which trajectory variables we want to display. We are now on a display list page. The bottom half gives 10 areas in which we can store values of a trajectory variable for display. 
the top half shows the names of these. Number nine is weight, as you see there. Some of the higher numbers must be reached by hitting the appropriate box. Number 42 is apogee altitude. 47 is weight in circular orbit at apogee. As these last two variables are the ones which really help us evaluate our design, let's go back to our picture and explain them a bit. If we burn out the sustainer engine at the point indicated, the vehicle will coast to the indicated apogee altitude, where we can apply more thrust to circularize the orbit. We could create a fourth and fifth section to do this, but there are some analytic formulas which will compute the apogee altitude and the final weight in circular orbit directly from the vehicle's position and velocity at a lower point. Not only does this save us time, but it lets us do a similar calculation at other points on the trajectory. For example, if the sustainer stopped thrusting at any previous point, the vehicle would coast to a somewhat lower apogee, but would have a bit more final weight in circular orbit at that altitude. We could do this calculation for each point along the trajectory, producing a curve which shows the orbital payload weight attainable at each orbital altitude using the current vehicle design. This is the curve we're really interested in for evaluating different designs. It can tell us which designs give us the most payload in orbit for whatever range of orbital altitudes we're interested in. Now we'll go back and watch Graphic Rocket produce some curves like this. First, we have to go to the display control page to indicate which of the variables we'll look at. Let's use range as our first independent variable, number eight. As we entered on the keyboard, some suggested lower and upper limits for the graph appear. Similarly, we specify altitude, number two, and weight, number nine, as our dependent variable. Now we can run the trajectory and display the resulting performance curves by hitting the Compute and Display box. First, we see the axes and labels appear, then a pair of curves whose labels indicate they refer to our previously stored run. Then the corresponding curves from our current run appear as they are calculated. A grid button allows us to see just where we reach 100,000 feet, for example. We want to change scale or change variables, we simply go back to the display control page. We decide we would like to see the comparative curves of weight in circular orbit versus orbital altitude. When we do, we see that the higher initial flight path angle and pull-up angles give us about 10% extra payload in the altitude range of interest. Now we decide to go back through the control page and the section conditions page to the aerodynamics pages as we want to see how much our performance would be improved if we could increase aerodynamic lift by a factor of two. We note that the lift coefficient has been specified as proportional to the angle of attack, so we double the proportionality constant, return to the section conditions page, specify that the aerodynamics in the second and third sections be the same as in section one. Then we go back through the control page to the display list page, where we must decide which of our previously stored outputs to discard in order to make room in our 10 display areas for outputs of our current run. Once we decide, we go to display control, set up our display axes, then let the machine compute and display the comparative graph. You're seeing these graphs appear about three times as fast as they actually happened. This is because we had to film the action at one-third normal speed to avoid producing an artificial flicker on the scope. The apparent speed is more like what we would get on an IBM 360 Model 50 instead of the Model 40 we have here. The previous graph showed the higher lift indeed produced a more lofted trajectory. Now we set up the display to see what difference it made in the possible payload at various orbital altitudes. The new graph of weight in circular orbit versus altitude shows us that the added lift gave us 
some added payload at the lower orbital altitudes, but made hardly any difference at the higher altitudes. So we can decide on this basis whether or not to investigate lifting boosters in any more detail. In a similar fashion, we can change other features of our vehicle design, propulsion, staging, guidance plans, and the like, and quickly get a feel for the design regions which look promising. Also, at any time, we can push a button which will transfer our current display over to an SC4060 film plotter for hard copy. And, once again, we can file away our current inputs and outputs at any time. Graphic Rocket has been tried on several design problems at RAND and has proved quite useful so far in giving engineers a quick and fairly thorough feel for the implications of possible design choices. The program will run on any IBM 360 model 40 or higher, equipped with disk packs and an IBM 2250 CRT terminal.